et shalom ras tefarine, ras yadinos tefarine. Deal with a couple of first things first. This is one thing we want to touch on from a while. Now, ever since we got to see it, we might have seen this particular video. Let's take it out here so you can get a good, a good look at this right here. This is the exposed video right here. This one is called um, My Name. Not my name, but the video is called My Name is Caesar Borgia or Kaiser Borgesi or Borgia, Borgia, Caesar Borgias. Right, that's Caesar Borgia, Borgia, right there. And this is a exposed vid, um, exposed one of the exposed series of DVDs out there that's called My Name is Caesar Borgia. Now, it asks the question back here, why do Christians worship um, Caesare or Caesare Borgia or Borgia's image as Jesus? It, it answers the question. Now, this is a very important question. I think this is like the Achilles heel of so-called white supremacy. This right here is the Achilles heel. That's why whenever you start to address it, you get a lot of apologists out there that basically say, oh, it doesn't matter what color Jesus is, and then they turn around and throw another movie or another kid's show or some other nonsense, and they'll use this kind of image. I mean, even in, um, what's that, South Park, you talk about some real ridiculous, blasphemical. So if they come to us and we speak about Yeshua, Jesus Christos, um, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in his true humanity, being an Ethiopian, you know what I'm saying, or an Ethiopian Hebrew, or a true Jew, a true Hebrew, or a Hebrew, and they say, oh, why you have him as being, for example, let's look at his two sons here. This is not a color picture, but you can see right there, in other words, Christ, the son, right? The, the, there's a son right there, and then there's the father, the father and son. Right, and this is from a brother, um, Yisakar, uh, Isaacar, and did this particular artwork right here. Right, and you can see the father and the son right there. And you can see it's like the hourglass figure. But whenever we show Christ or Yeshua looking as 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 one of us, you know, saying as Ethiopian Hebrew folks always say to us, um. You know, it doesn't matter what color Jesus is, so forth and so on, you know. But it does matter. You know, and that's why whenever you see this particular picture, even if you're a little bit conscious, somewhere in the back of your mind, you say, oh, Jesus, you know, you, the, the idea, even if you're conscious, this shows you how deep this psychological warfare, this is a spiritual psyops job right here, Caesar Borgia. So this vid right here that we got to check out, we got a couple of clips or the compiler thereof includes a couple of clips from a series that we had put on the tube and published a little bit earlier. But overall, it's very, very good. And stay tuned if you get a chance to see it. We have it available as a package. Or you could check out the exposed DVD people out there on the Internet. So get a copy. Check out a copy. I and I, we have it as part of a um, a package, a study package. But if you just get an individual copy of this, please get an individual copy of this because this basically asks the question, why do Christians worship Caesar Borgia's image as Jesus? Then it explains right back here in the write-up for it, it says, 1492 goes down as the year that the entire planet was hoodwinked and I would say, and bamboozled by the Roman Catholic Church. During Alexander the Sixth term, the Christians were fighting the Holy Crusades against the so-called infidels. The enemy that the Church was fighting was northward movement of Islam as far up into Europe as Germany. These Middle Eastern Islamics took control of Constantinople and Turkey and threatened the stronghold that the Roman Empire and in turn the church had on the world at the time. Pope Alexander 
the sixth, use the old tactic of discrediting an opponent to weaken his position, to weaken the enemy's position. One major obstacle that faced Alexander and the Romanist church was the fact that Yeshua, or Jesus, who their entire religion was based on, was physically the same as the Islamics that they were fighting against. And at that time, the Black Moors and the Moors and the true Black Arab Emirates, speaking about like people like the Sudanese and the, 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 the Somalis today, a lot of them are in a state of amnesia too. They don't recognize they've been pushed out of that land as well, not by so-called um, um, black Christian people, but by the so-called white, pale, Hindi Arabs, so forth and so on. So in a sense, a lot of folks don't know who they are. And the Roman church at this particular time, it faced a problem because the ones who they were, you know, their Jesus of the time was a black Jesus or a Ethiopian or Moorish looking man. And this is what we have in the catacombs, so forth and so on. This vid goes into that as well and shows you the actual evidence. You understand? The actual evidence to prove its main point. So uh, he, speaking about the true Yeshua, our black Lord and Savior, not this counterfeit. This is a fraud. This is identity theft. This right here is the, it's the highest level of identity theft. You talk about identity theft is a crime. This is the highest level, stealing the identity of our Lord and Savior, of the Son of God. That's a big time, big time crime. But it goes on to say right here that Yeshua, or the true Jesus, the true um, Yehoshua, Yeshua, Yesus, Iusus, was represented in all paintings carvings and sculptures as the dark-skinned man of Middle Eastern origin that he, he was, or as an Ethiopian, as a black man. Nazareth certainly was in the Middle Eastern area that later came under the influence of Islam. Interesting is it came under the influence of whitewash Islam when we bring it up to the modern time. So we see that in this religious thing, there was actually a racial motivation, too, on both sides, on the European side with this, and also on the pale red Mohammedan Arab side that pushed the true Arabs, the Sudanese and the Somalis, out of Yemen, the Somalis out of the Yemen area, and the Sudanese out of the Mecca and Arabian area, what we would call also Medea, the Median area as well. But the question is asked, how could they possibly convince their constituency of the wickedness of the enemy when their own Messiah looked like them? Like, how could they convince the, the people who are worshiping a black Jesus or Jesus Yeshua in his true humanity as a black man. So how can they convince the Christian soldiers to fight against these other people when they look at these other bearded black men, Moorish, Ethiopian um, men, you understand, looking men, with woolly hair like the picture of Jesus before this whitewash, how could they convince their people these people were the bad guys? You understand? Although the original Christians were certainly Middle Eastern people of color, more correctly Ethiopian, by the time Alexander ascended to the papacy, Europeans had long taken control of the church. Actually, the control of the church, the Middle Ages, Church of the Middle Ages, it was a hostile takeover. In business, they call it a hostile takeover. You understand? Basically, it was a hostile takeover of the church in the original um, Ethiopian, Middle Eastern, so-called, and black, Southern African influence was whitewashed. And this is why today this is the pop image you have of Jesus. But this is actually the image of Caesar Borgia. Really, it's the image of the Antichrist. So Pope Alexander the Sixth Solution was to have every image of the real Jesus, of the real Yeshua, destroyed or whitewashed. Historically speaking, they call it whitewashed, to have it whitewashed and literally 
had the Vatican gutted and redone. Had the Vatican gutted. You know, they gutted. They 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 re they redid that. And it's interesting if you look at some of the movies about um, what is it that, that guy Michelangelo and some of these other artists. You actually have to ask yourself, well, if they were running this Pope operation, why all of a sudden now they're doing all these new paintings? You, you know what I mean? Because that's around the historical time that they whitewashed it. You know, first they had a prohibition on 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 it. It's like what they're doing with with cannabis and other things. They almost like try to make spook you out with it until they get the control of it and say, hey, you know something really good with it. Now we're selling it and you can buy it from us. That, that's the kind of thing they basically did. So um, Pope Alexander the Sixth, he commissioned Leonardo da Vinci to recast Jesus. You understand? In the image of his son and his son Caesar, uh, it was Caesar Borgia or Borgia. Caesar Borgia, Caesar Borgias, as some pronounce it. That was the Pope had a son, a physical son. Remember, they said the Pope is the Lord God according to their theology on earth. So, after all, the son of the Pope, his illegitimate son, but the son of the Pope would be the son of God. And this is what they did with this particular image that was recast. You understand? To be the new image. And you see the picture of his son right there. He's holding up the picture of his son right there. You see that? So that's the picture that had become this particular picture. You understand? This particular sodomite right there. All right? Uh-huh. Now, with the express intent was of passing off the historical Jesus or the historical Jesus, as European, you understand, that romantic, really as romantic and European in appearance. To this day, there are armed guards stationed around the clock at the entrances of the catacombs to keep anyone from viewing the original wall carvings of Jesus in his legitimate Ethiopian ethnic representation in his original ethnic. Now, on this vid, you actually get to see some of the pictures that they did show in some old documentaries. It got out. They thought we were sleeping, but somehow it got out. But they're not showing those too much anymore. You understand? So these kind of documents are evidence. And now, because of that, folks are like, hey, I want to see it for myself. And so they saw a lot of people coming there, and they're like, what are you here looking for? Oh, I'm going to look for the real Jesus, black. And they're like, oh, oh, we have to do something. So now they have armed guards that keep folks away from these areas. They talk about historic preservation and all this kind of stuff. They don't want you to see it. What they're probably working on is whitewashing them and then try to say, well, what you're going to see here is not really black. Is They had some soot because people were burning candles. You know, they make a lot of kind of um, unscientific, scientific excuses. Could this be true? You understand? Know Does Jesus, the true Jesus, Yeshua, have dark skin? Is your church giving you the truth on the real Jesus? This is a topic that needs to be exposed. That needs to be exposed. So this is what this vid is about. And yours truly has a couple of clips on it from I and I, Wendem Yadin is on this particular video as well, and some other clips that we didn't even get to see that were very moving, including uh, black, the Black Christ painting in South Africa. You understand? So please check this out. This is a very good video, and we say kudos to the Exposed DVD people, and once again, giving a very good presentation, you understand, of... Um, of the knowledge and keeping it true and real, right and exact. So get a copy of this if you can, and it's called My Name is Caesar Borgias. Really, his name is Caesar Borgias, the so-called Antichrist whitewashed Jesus. Beware of the mark of